Hi, and welcome to the Calm Body, Clear Mind Workshop. My intention for today is to deliver you extraordinarily high yield tools that can bring forth more aliveness in your body in days. What I've observed over the course of my clinical practice and my online work with clients is that this is what we're after. It's an experience of aliveness because the disconnection that we suffer and struggle with through our symptoms is the source of all pain. So how do we make sense out of symptoms, right? Aren't they just problems that need to be solved? We address the root cause driver. And specifically in this workshop, we're going to talk about anxiety and brain fog, because if you think about a fire raging, right, and you are inclined to just turn off the smoke alarm, the problem is going to persist, right? Because the root cause hasn't been addressed. And while it's very tempting to want to understand exactly why a symptom is happening, and there are some frameworks that can help us to begin to decode the language that the body is speaking. The truth is that you can just set the conditions for your body to unlock its own regenerative resources. And then not only the symptom that you're worried about, but many others can begin to resolve. So all of the side benefits of this approach are pretty remarkable. We're also going to talk about what it is to love and prioritize and effortlessly engage in the discipline of self-care. I have been known to say that self-care is the greatest contribution that you can make to the world. And I love the interpretation of discipline that I learned from a Jungian analyst called Marian Woodman that says, it is the gaze of a teacher who loves you. So we're going to reorient around the power of choice that you have and these small commitments and the way that they can introduce you to an entirely new way of moving through your life with self-care as a priority. We're also going to talk about what it means to send your system a signal of safety. That is how we unlock that regenerative potential. That is how we turn off the smoke alarm because the fire is actually put out. And that is how we shift out of stress physiology, fight, flight, freeze, fawn, that drives these patterns that then translate into symptoms, illness, and chronic challenges. So you are in the right place if you have had the same symptom for more than six months, because this means that you are being invited onto a new path in your life. And I am specialized in the transition of paths, in the change of story, in this movement from what was working for a while, whether it's your lifestyle choices or your environment or your relationships, into what now is being asked of you. And that expansive transformational journey is, in my opinion, what we came here to experience. So you're also in the right place. If you have been told that you have a chronic illness and perhaps specifically a chronic mental illness, and that you need medication to manage those symptoms, perhaps for life. You're also in the right place if you feel stuck. This is arguably the most common descriptor that I encounter when I am meeting somebody who is ready to go on the journey of their unlived life. It is that you feel stuck. And it's usually because you are between stories. You know that whatever the hell you've been doing and trying, it's just not working. It's just not delivering you the shift and change that you know is possible. So you start to feel the fear that says, maybe it's always going to be this way. And you also haven't seen what it could be like. And that's why I've become so passionate in my career about making sure that everybody knows what is possible. And there's so much more possible I'll share with you today than often uh, meets the eye. So I am Dr. Kelly Brogan. I am a conventionally trained psychiatrist. I once believed so much in the conventional medical model that I was one of the first 300 in the world to specialize in medicating pregnant and breastfeeding women. 
I went through my own rupture with the system, if you will, when I was diagnosed with my own first potentially chronic and recidivistic health condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that was my invitation, right? So I had symptoms, which I'll reference in this session of brain fog and fatigue, and I was postpartum. And so it was easy for me to just sort of chalk it off to like new mom challenges and struggles. But once I saw in black and white in my lab work on a routine physical that I was now in the realm of patienthood and I might have to take a prescription for the rest of my life, call it sacred laziness. I don't know what arose inside of me that said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I very uncharacteristically consulted a naturopath. I made very basic changes to my diet and I put in black and white on paper, I put this condition into remission in the space of a year and it ignited in me a a kind of righteous anger (laughs) about all of the ways I had been potentially misled or colluded in my own deception through my you know, blood, sweat, and tears of medical training. I had never been told that nutrition was relevant outside of like, don't drink a big gulp soda from 7-Eleven if you have diabetes and like maybe lay off the salt if you have heart disease. I was also never told that you could possibly put these kinds of so-called chronic illnesses into remission. And my journey, that fork in the road was presented to me where I could have just said, okay, it's nice that I don't have this illness anymore and moving on. But instead I went off into the wild unknown and began to explore the pre-existing medical literature that supports our capacity to heal how and why. And I learned that there were decades of science supporting the interconnectedness of our thoughts, of our hormonal systems, of our gut, And so it would make sense that these lifestyle choices that we are encountering every single day, that these exposures would have a major impact on all of those connected systems that are themselves expressing something is not a fit here. So after that, I, you know, became quite a whistleblower, not only about the untold story of chronic illness, but also about the medications that I had been trained to prescribe and all of the Underdisclosed, perhaps I'll say, adverse effects and the overpromised outcomes. And through my work, I have had the privilege and the honor of walking side by side with so many thousands of people who have exited the system and more importantly, shed a story of struggle and smallness and suffering that they thought would define their entire lives. And they recognized that that struggle was actually the portal, right, to their purpose and to their more authentic and full expression and the reclamation of vitality that we know is our birthright. We know we came here to experience it. So I have also made quite a sport out of proving (laughs) that it is possible for anything to be resolved, to be put into remission, that anything can be healed. And a lot of my passion and zeal, but also the evidence that I began to accumulate that this is possible, came through and from my now late mentor, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, who was, in my opinion, one of the most important figures in modern medicine. And he had 27 years of clinical practice proving that you know, terminal cancers and chronic disabling illnesses can be reversed when the proper conditions are set. So I have started to collect my own library of these testimonials and published in the medical literature, sometimes never heretofore documented recoveries from all manner of illness, even though I'm a psychiatrist, right? So I didn't, you know, start hanging a shingle saying, you know, come one, come all. I started to work with women who had been multiply diagnosed with psychiatric labels, but then we also found that their reflux and their asthma and their acne and their IBS and their Hashimoto's was also resolving as we undertook the protocol that I'll talk about today. So I want you to consider what it would feel like to quite literally never worry about your health or your symptoms again. 
like to just opt out of that way of being. And this might have implications for your friendships and your relationships. I know with my own family of origin, I came to a point where I said, you know what, I'm not interested in connecting about our health struggles, right? What else is there to talk about, right? So there is a commiseration that is so normative that this shift is huge in all of the energy that you take back because you can never be baited again by the concern that something horrible is going to happen to you. The other shoe is going to drop. You're going to find, you know, a lump. You're going to be exposed to a thing, or somehow you're going to find yourself in a doctor's office confronting a label that you're never going to be able to get out from under. So what would it be like to never worry about that again? What would it be like to know exactly what is best for you to eat, to no longer struggle with all of the conflicting dietary information out there and to be able to tap in to inner guidance around that. In my opinion, there is a specific order of operations that gets you to that place, right? Like it doesn't just work to say, oh, like eat intuitively, it's fine. There's something that has to happen first in order to really open up that channel and to know that you can trust it. What would it be like to have steady energy, sound sleep, amazing digestion, and a comfortable body? What would it be like to be done with doctors and prescriptions? What would it be like to feel ready to step into the gift that you came here to express, to take your energy away from fixing the challenges, adversity, and problems and struggles in your life, and to begin to move it into creative energy, to play, to hobbies, to passions, and to self-expression? What would it be like to understand clear, intuitive signs from your body to know how to read your yes and your no. There are clear steps to get to that place. Perhaps nobody has ever told you that you can heal anything. And in that case, I would love to be the first. Our mind reset helped me take control of of my health. It's given me my life back. It's given me a new life to start out with. It's just, it's inspiring to see what I'm going to be able to do. My thyroid is completely are totally normal. This is after seven years of taking a thyroid medication. What I've been able to receive from this program is how important it is to take care of yourself, your mind, your body, and your soul. I am in control of my health. I have zero medication, zero sleeping medication. Three weeks, a month into this program, as I became aware of this layer of anxiety, I could sleep. Never thought I'd be off of everything off of all my medication. These 44 days open this portal in a physical and spiritual level that no other program can offer you. One of the most successful parts of the entire program for me was the, the retraining of just, you know, life is beautiful. I don't have these periods from hell anymore. I could more easily get back into my body. I could connect with my breath. I felt so different after taking all of that on my diet. My life is transformed. I am on a new career path. My authentic self is coming forth and it feels so good. So I am moved every time I watch these testimonials because I love transformation stories. I love when what we thought was our worst nightmare becomes the portal to our greatest experience of ourselves. I love our stories. I love how the plot twists show up. And in order to access this enthusiasm, this inspiration, this open-heartedness, and most importantly, the antidote to fear, which is curiosity, you have to know what is possible. So what I'm about to share are all tips and packs from this program, and they are extraordinarily high yield, but they are founded on a reframe about your symptoms being wise expression from you to you about you. So let's talk about what health looks like. You know that it does not involve waking up to stimulants, buoying your way through your day with pills and sugar and drinking yourself to sleep at night. So there is an internal compass that's already online, but there is so much noise around how to access it and around how big of an impact it could possibly make 
to adjust these choices. So let's first talk about probably the number one complaint that I have encountered through my clinical practice and with the clients that we work with in the online space, which is brain fog. I'm not sure there is something more disorienting than the sense that your mind is not accessible to you. So I experienced this myself when I was first diagnosed with Hashimoto's and I was forgetting my ATM pin number. I was having to mail checks to cab drivers because I forgot my wallet. I was double booking patients. And not only was I experiencing the amplified stress of all of this seeming chaos in my life, but I was also feeling a lot of shame around how it felt like my life was slipping through my fingers. So there are some very simple and extremely powerful and rapid acting changes that you can make that will start to introduce you to some of the underlying drivers. So remember those root cause drivers of what we are calling, you know, psychiatric symptoms like brain fog or cognitive impairment. And the first and most impactful one is to change your breakfast. So I have worked with patients who have experienced panic attacks, you know, up to six times a day. And when we have stabilized their blood sugar, those symptoms resolve. So were they ever some sort of chemical brain imbalance? Or was this one of what I call the psychiatric pretenders, where there is a physiologic imbalance that's masquerading as psychiatric. And when we stabilize that imbalance, all sorts of symptoms resolve within days, okay? So you're going to want to give your body what your body is asking for first thing in the morning, which is specifically blood sugar stabilizing fats. So I have become famous for this smoothie recipe that we're gonna share with you and other breakfast recipes, including these delicious pancakes that have the effect of blood sugar stabilization because they incorporate large amounts of natural fats. And when we work with these natural fats, which have been much maligned by mainstream media over the decades, probably since the 80s, when we work with these fats, it's almost like putting a big log on the fire and allowing it to burn instead of crumpling these little papers all day long and throwing them on the fire and hoping that you can keep it going. The impact of blood sugar instability on your fight or flight system is extraordinary. So you will find out that maybe the truth is you're not an irritable person. Maybe the truth is you're not super scattered and, you know, forgetful. Maybe the truth is you don't actually have quote unquote ADHD. Maybe the truth is your system was just asking for a different kind of relationship to these macronutrients. So the next step is to incorporate a high yield practice that can have an effect in the space of one to three minutes. So I was an extremely reluctant meditator and it's important to know that I was living a totally conventional life like fast food, candy, dyeing my hair black, taking birth control. I didn't exercise because I've always been naturally thin. I didn't even know what the concept of meditation was before I was diagnosed and I began to walk this heroine's journey home to my own power. So when I was introduced to the concept of meditation, every time I did it, all I did was encounter my own monkey mind and my own racing thoughts. And I ended up feeling largely worse after I tried to meditate than when I just didn't bother at all. And that was before I encountered what are called medical meditations through Kundalini Yoga. I've since become trained as a practitioner, and I am very passionate about what can be achieved in the space of three minutes. And I just did a three-minute meditation this morning. This three-minute commitment, I think, is the hack for people who otherwise struggle to see benefits through meditation or struggle to commit or both. So let me show you this one. You need to start with a small experience that sends a message to your nervous system that everything is okay. It's a pause. And so this specific um, meditation is actually for cognition. So one of the things I love about Kundalini Yoga is that everything has a purpose, right? So I'm gonna demonstrate it to you now, but essentially all of the movements and breathing has a, they have specific purpose to help 
amplify your cognitive capacity. Okay, so all you do is move your hands in a circular motion like this. You're going to touch your thumbs very lightly together as they move, and you're going to breathe in and out. As you breathe in and out, your exhale is going to be a contraction of your belly. So your belly is going to come in and your air is going to come out of your nose. And then the inhale is just a passive inhale. And it's going to look like this. Okay, so your inhale and exhale have the same length, and you're pushing your belly in to push the air out. And you're going to just try and get that rhythm, but don't, you know, get overwhelmed by it. That's not the idea. Just approximate it. This doesn't have to be perfect. The best you can do actually still has the same effect. And we're only going to do this for one to three minutes. If you can do it for three minutes, just take a pause at a moment in your day where you're really flagging and do that for three minutes. I can virtually guarantee that you're going to feel different at the end of it. All right. So next is your new bedtime. When I talk to folks who are struggling with their energy and with their sleep cycle, this is one of the fastest routes to destabilizing and unraveling your entire life. When your energy is erratic during the day and you don't feel like you can meet the demands of whatever is coming at you, but then you can't actually restore your energy at night because you're not sleeping well. So what I have found and lived is the non-linear relationship between productivity and bedtime. <laughs> what I mean by that is that I used to be like a burn the midnight oil kind of you know working mom. And I would think, okay, once I get my kids to sleep, that's my time. First of all, it's my personal time to unwind, but then it's also my time to get work done and be productive. So I would like very typically be up until 2 a.m. When my mentor died in 2015, I went through a dark night of the soul and I reached for these meditation practices and specifically a pre-dawn version of these meditation practices. So I started getting up at five and practicing, you know, Kundalini yoga, medical meditation. And I soon realized that I couldn't go to bed at two and wake up at five, like that wouldn't work. So I began to go to bed earlier and earlier until I was naturally waking up at five. And it turned out that that required that I go to bed and start to wind down around 8.30 and I go to bed at nine. What is amazing about this change in my lifestyle choices is that my productivity skyrocketed. So I was actually sleeping more and I had less time available to myself. And yet somehow I started to get more things done. I built this program. I wrote books. You know, I was in a flow that I couldn't access when my circadian rhythm was out of whack. So I highly recommend that you put in your toolkit the consideration of one week of a 9 p.m. bedtime. All right. So let's talk anxiety. This is a highly non-specific term, right? Like most of the psychiatric terminology, it's descriptive, it's subjective, and it also happens to be the most common complaint that I encounter is that we are feeling anxious. We are feeling a sense of unease in this system. We are feeling unsafety, unsafety in our bodies, unsafety in our relationships, unsafety in the world. And of course, this is amplified through the mainstream media. It's also amplified through direct-to-consumer marketing of pharmaceuticals that are trying to get us to see our anxiety as the problem, right? So Krishnamurti was quoted as saying, it's no sign of health to be well adapted to a profoundly sick society. So what if when we are experiencing anxiety and so-called depression, it's actually a wise response to wrong living? And that if you were to medicate that response, it would be the equivalent of turning off that smoke alarm. And what happens then? Well, I have very intimate experience with what happens then because I worked for a decade with individuals who were withdrawing from medications that were prescribed to take the edge off or to just be some sort of, you know, like temporary fix that they ended up being on for many, many years. Because like, why would you not need a medication if you're not resolving the root cause? And suffice it to say that these and associated medications, whether we're talking about antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, it's in the name, right? You're fighting with your mood. You're fighting with your felt 
anxiety, there's no winning that battle. And the side effects include, interestingly, cognitive impairment and dependency, right? So it's like you end up playing whack-a-mole where potentially you feel a shift here and then it's arising, you know, in another symptom over there. And there are many drivers of what we call anxiety, including, as I already have mentioned, blood sugar imbalance, including thyroid imbalances, including food reactions, including the undisclosed side effects of other medications that you might be prescribed. So the first step that I would take if I were struggling with what I would call anxiety is to eliminate coffee. I'm not saying all caffeine. I'm saying specifically coffee. And I was a classic New York coffee addict all throughout my training in my 20s and probably early 30s. I would drink six cups of coffee a day. And I also experienced myself as tired all the time, anxious all the time, and as an irritable person. Like I just sort of like thought that's who I am, right? And so since I have worked with, you know, and if I could work with New Yorkers and encourage them to discontinue coffee for a period of time, I can work with anyone. <laughs> so this is possible for you, even if you feel that it's not. And I would just start with one week, just one week, one week of your adult life, you can go without coffee. The withdrawal, trust me, I know, can be very gnarly. And I'll give you some tips for how to mitigate that. But you could also remember that your body will recalibrate. It's only going to be like 48 to 72 hours. And then you will begin to see who you are without this contributing factor. And it's not because it's intrinsically bad. It actually has many documented benefits. It's just that if you're somebody who is dealing with energy issues, anxiety, so-called anxiety issues, and sleep issues, it's probably not a fit. Does that mean you can never again touch it? No, but you want to know what your baseline is. And during that time, you can consider alternatives, but it, it's helpful to, to explore like, what is it that you love about it? Do you love the taste? In which case, like a dandelion kind of a tea will give you that taste, right? Do you love the boost, like the effect, the alteration of your perception that happens, in which case you could work with something like a yerba mate or matcha, which have much different energy, but still sort of give you that kind of stimulation, let's say. Or is it just the ritual of like a hot beverage, in which case it could be great to explore a beverage like golden milk that has a million other benefits and none of the stimulatory effect. All right. Another option is to work with collagen, which is essentially a dehydrated bone broth. It is tasteless and odorless, and it confers many potential benefits, one of which is that it is high in an amino acid called glycine, which itself has been studied in isolation to treat anxiety. And you can get it in this closer to food form, right? So unless you're consuming good amounts of bone broth, working with collagen and especially at night can be a wonderful food-based tool. And lastly is another Kundalini Yoga medical meditation. You'll see this kind of breathing practice in other lineages as well. It's very basic and it is a way to stimulate your parasympathetic system. All you're gonna do is block off your right nostril and breathe in and out for one to three minutes of your left nostril. So if I am like about to give a toast at a wedding or give some sort of big presentation, I will sometimes like covertly do this while I'm sitting at a table with other people. So this is a tool you can just have in your kit to begin to remind your system that everything is okay. And I find that having these tools begins to support the perception that you are more in control, that you are more empowered than your system would otherwise believe. All right, so let's move on to the most essential foundational aspect of healing, of integrating the message of these symptoms and beginning to allow for the expansion of your selfhood that comes through our challenges. The curiosity that I referenced, the enthusiasm, the inspiration, 
These can only come when you begin to shift the frame of your understanding. And this was the major shift that happened for me through the research, right? So I didn't walk across like some shamanic path, right? I walked across a bridge of scientific research. And this research helped me to understand not only can the body heal, that it actually wants to, that's called homeostasis, but also that all of these aspects of our lifestyle, all of these inputs, whether it's what we're thinking, what we're eating, what we're drinking, these inputs have major documented effects, especially when they are recruited in concert, right? Like all at once, but also that it's essential to begin to marinate in new cultures and communities that are transmitting a different kind of message. This message is what I call sovereignty consciousness, adult consciousness, and it is a maturation out of victim consciousness that is fundamentally you fighting with what's happening. It's you experiencing the helplessness and dependency and powerlessness of your own childhood, right? At a certain point, it's time to be initiated. And one of the most powerful aspects of that initiation is framing what is happening as something that you can handle, as growing your spine bigger than any problem that's in front of you and making contact with that level of power that you've always had, but were deceived into believing you didn't. Your symptoms are telling you about yourself. They are a language that you can learn to decode. So in this phenomenological orientation towards what's happening, you are recruiting the power of the placebo effect. So you might think like, oh, well, that means I'm just like tricking myself and that's not real healing. Well, no, it is actually, it is the primary driver of documented medical outcomes. And this is also true for the negative impact of self-sabotaging, if you want to call it that, beliefs called the nocebo effect, right? So there is a, a study I love to reference of folks who were treated to remission on Prozac. So these are people who would have said, Prozac saved my life. It's the reason that I'm, you know, functioning well and that my depression is stabilized. They were told that they were going to be randomized in this trial to either continue on their same dose that was working or to begin taking a sugar pill. And they weren't going to know which was happening. Well, what happened at the crossover point is that both groups became depressed, even the ones that were taking the antidepressant that they said was working for them. The power of our belief is a representation of the power that we have to shape our story and to plug in to fields of reality that liberate us from our own disempowerment. So in many ways, there are kind of two belief systems, right? So the one that I was trained in and raised with, which I'm sure is familiar to you through mainstream media and the dominant narrative of you know, world cultures that says, our bodies are actually genetically loaded for disease. Like you were born with this problem and it's just a matter of time before the machine of your body breaks down. So your body requires screenings and active monitoring and your illness is just kind of like, you know, it's just something that happens. And the responsible thing to do is to manage your symptoms with pharmaceuticals and to remain compliant. Or the vitalistic perspective that says your body is actually designed for wellness and it does not make mistakes. It does not make mistakes. This belief will then extend into your life and you will start to live your life in such a way that you will no longer believe that your life could possibly have any mistakes, that you could possibly make any mistakes, that there are actually any problems here, right? That shift in my experience starts with the lived and felt embodied reality that there was never a problem to begin with. 
And that's pretty much what every single person I work with tells me is that they now see that there was nothing ever wrong with them. So what becomes possible? I want to share a couple of these. I told you this is like my greatest passion. This is the the joy I experienced through this work is to experience people's stories. So I want you to know some of the things that are possible. So Jennifer saying, when I started this journey, I was terrified. I was a doubter. Now here I am, day 23 of the diet, and I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Between yesterday and today, I actually functioned without anxiety. None. Just last week, I couldn't even go one hour without anxiousness or brain fog. I was depersonalized and disconnected day in and day out. Today, I cried tears of joy, an emotion that has been absent as I have only been living my life by trying to survive each day. I listened to music and danced. I got in my car and drove around my neighborhood after not driving for five weeks. I took my time shopping at Target. Instead of trying to rush through and escape back to the safety of my home, I feel peace. My father told me I have an aura around my face. I ran into an old friend who hasn't even known what I've been going through. And first thing she said to me was, you look amazing. I finally feel the puzzle pieces of me falling back into place. I'm so grateful for today. I'm so grateful for stumbling upon Kelly Brogan on a podcast. This is working. And this is an example of the side benefits that can happen when you engage in intentional lifestyle change through this kind of initiatory protocol. So Nancy says, 20 pounds just naturally fell off my body by following the Vital Mind Reset diet, and I have started being kinder to myself, both with food, thoughts, and movement. I've been nourishing my body with meditation and nutrient-rich whole foods. I've replaced many chemical-laden products with more natural options. I'm sleeping better, and I've increased energy. I don't want to sleep all day, and I'm not crying as much as I was. Overall, emotional ups and downs are less. I feel a renewed sense of motivation. I have begun to gather resources for additional support. I have been better able to focus. My skin looks great. I have pushed out of my comfort zone to try new foods and practices. I've connected with wonderful women in this group, and I feel a little less alone as a result. I have begun to listen more intently to my intuition and body to figure out how to honor what I need rather than please others. Okay. That is definitely not something that you would imagine would come from changing your breakfast, doing three minutes of basic meditation and beginning to orient towards detoxifying the inflammatory stimuli in your life, okay? So Charlotte says, I can't believe how productive I've become. I feel like I know my purpose now and I don't have anything in my way stopping me. I'm in charge. It's a great change. I'm on day 26 of the diet and the amount of opportunities that have opened up have been magical. So I want you to take another journey with me. I want you to imagine what it would be like to open your eyes in the morning and feel spaciousness in your mind where your worries used to be. I want you to imagine throwing out that last orange colored plastic prescription bottle into the trash to feel your spine grow two feet taller, present, proud, and ready to meet all that your life, body, and mind deliver. I want you to imagine pulling your nightgown over your head as you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror, your face brighter and more defined, your eyes clearer, your belly flat, your hair full and shiny, and you smile with a sense of finally arriving in your own skin. I want you to imagine the blissful relief that you feel as you pass by the familiar billboard advertising for cancer screening. So grateful to no longer be afraid of your body. And I want you to imagine what it would be like to feel clear, calm, energized, and optimistic in 44 days without pills, complicated instructions, or huge investments. So why did you sign up for this masterclass? It is likely because you know that there is a better way to respond to your struggles and to your challenges, but there's so much conflicting info out there. Like how could you possibly sift and sort through all of it? Are you just expected to try everything, self-experiment and biohack for the rest of your life? I have studied this decision point because I have been through it so many times and I have observed so many moving through their hero or heroine's journey home to themselves. And what I find is that at this fork in the road, I've encountered two options. One is that I just 
keep trying the fix and manage approach. And I just distract myself with busyness and eventually circle back to my problems and try something new. And I just keep rinsing and repeating that. I keep prioritizing others and other aspects of my life over what I know deep down is calling my attention inside of myself. And I just keep kind of putting out fires. Or I engage what I call a pattern disrupt. I change some big aspect of my life that I know has been wanting to be changed for a long time. But I first turn towards myself. And in turning towards myself and prioritizing myself, sometimes just for a few weeks, that pattern disrupt clarifies to me what that choice is. And usually it just unfolds without having to effort it or will it or make some like big, scary choice. It's also essential with this other path that I plug into others who believe this so that my permission field is expanded so that there is a normalizing of this courageous new way of being that allows me to shed my old identity, my old things that I thought I was right about or that I needed to attach to. It's essential that we feel held in this process. What if I am the healer for the whole world? What if I can show up and own and honor my innermost desires and magnificence? What if I get off my thyroid medication that I've been on for 25 years of my life? What if I could breathe easily, have ease in my body? So what if I can not only support myself, but actually become wealthy from my own work in the world instead of having to work for someone else? What if I could truly exist without the need for insulin? So as your system begins to engage this pattern disrupt, you can start to access your desires. I call them positive what ifs. And I encourage you to play around with what some of these might be for you. So Vital Mind Reset is my signature health reclamation protocol that is the 44-day initiatory journey that I have worked through personally in my health reclamation process and had refined by my mentor, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, and that has now been expanded to include over many years online participants who have worked the protocol in their own lives. This is also the same protocol that you will see in my New York Times bestselling book, A Mind of Your Own, and also Own Yourself through expert curriculum development. And it is the only program of its kind with evidence to support its outcomes. So the program consists of three pillars. And you might find that none of these sound super revolutionary, but it is the specific combination of factors in the setting of all of the pre-existing evidence that I have published, in the setting of my mentor's endorsement, in the setting of my clinical practice, and the accessibility of these changes that is part of their magic, right? So there is a specific nutritional protocol. This protocol is an ancestral diet. There should absolutely not be an experience of deprivation. You're not taking out eggs and nuts. You're eating nutrient-dense food that should allow you to feel full. And you are minimizing the biggest culprits of inflammatory signaling. There are three minute daily medical meditations that are specifically chosen, one for each of the weeks of the program. And then there is the notorious detox protocol that I learned from my mentor, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, the coffee enema, which is the only place I teach his specific protocol in honor of his legacy. So how does it work? The first two weeks of this program are what I affectionately call my own personal brand of brainwashing where I transmit to you the codes of empowerment. I offer that reframe that can come through somebody who has lived, breathed, and worked with this frame of understanding of the human body and the human experience that says there are no mistakes here. You will get a daily email. They're very bite-sized. And this will happen over the six weeks. And you'll begin to incubate this new belief system, this new way of being. And it will feel like, you know, the clouds moving away from the sun. 
You're just learning how to orient to the here and now where you are a powerful adult and everything that is happening in your lifescape is for you. So the first 22 days are focused on transformation and the second 22 days are focused on restoration. I have also included a number of bonuses that continue to grow because anytime I find a great resource that I feel is supportive, I just kind of put it in there. So you'll learn everything you need to know about coffee enemas. You'll also learn about medication tapering because it's important to acknowledge that this program is the foundation for safe and effective medication tapering. As somebody who specialized for 10 years in medication discontinuation, I will tell you, there was my clinical experience before the Vital Mind Reset Protocol and after, and it was night and day. So I will give you information that you need about that. And then I also have a module where I help to guide you after the protocol around food reintroduction and how is it that you might start to feel into what the best diet for you is. My mentor always said, People want to eat the diet that heals them, but there's a lot of deprogramming that we have to get out of the way in order for you to access that intuition. So remember, I used to think that it was all about genes and bad luck. I used to think that symptoms just needed to be managed. I used to think things like brain fog and constipation and body pain were just a normal part of aging or just like being a human. And I used to believe that everybody took some kind of prescription. So I understand what it is to change your mindset authentically and to begin to orient towards your creative expression instead of through and around your fear. So once you become a member, you will be greeted with immediate access and you will start your process, which will be dripped out over each of these 44 days. So you signed up most likely because there was something that brought you here. There was a little yes inside that said, I know that I have been sold a poor bargain <laughs> about what this whole health and wellness thing is about, right? And maybe you've come to believe that there's like huge investments required or special gadgets or intensive retreats. And you just decided to focus on the other responsibilities that you have because you feel overwhelmed. If you're feeling like your case is different, this is a big one. I still encounter this. It's called exceptionalism. If you feel like, oh yeah, I'm sure that worked for those folks, but my situation is different. If you feel like you're basically like you already know how to eat, nothing I've said here sounds so revolutionary. If you feel like, you know, yeah, I already get it, but like I just don't ever implement it. Or if you feel like you need some sort of credential doctor in order to make this final shift out of your struggle. Let me tell you that this is what everyone who has ultimately aligned with their inner yes and committed to walking through this initiatory process once felt. And now we have grown a huge, and I would argue very unique field of empowerment and transformational energy in this program that I think has a life of its own, right? Like once you tap into it, maybe even once you click pay or once you choose to invest, the access to that energy field already starts to happen. And I see this in my friends who do the protocol, who are already like sometimes even yoga or wellness instructors, they already know all this stuff. So how could it be that this program catalyzes this beautiful expansion right? This movement through the chrysalis of their life into the butterfly of expression. If it was just sort of familiar information, well, I think it's about this energetic field of possibility that I have grown over these years. So to know what is possible is essential to know that there are folks who are resolving all sorts of symptoms and chronic illnesses from the most intensive and severe, all the way to folks who are just in patterns of struggle in their relationships with money, in their career, and they just haven't found a way to actually progress their narrative. This kind of a pattern disrupt is about reclaiming your power, is about stepping into your own skin and beginning to use your body as a navigational tool. 
So I have testimonials here about getting rid of all psychiatric medication, about anxiety completely resolving, about hives going away, about seeing self-care in a positive light, about souls feeling lighter, about depression resolving, sleep stabilizing, dizziness and agoraphobia and PTSD, you know, becoming a thing of the past and pain diminishing. The sky is really the limit because when your system is delivered this signal of safety, you will experience all that wants to come through you now that fight, flight, and freeze physiology is stabilized. And it's going to be extremely personal to you. And to know what is possible is an essential part of activating that desire in you to move towards your unlived life experience. So this protocol in my private practice was valued at $10,000. And the refinement of the protocol and the delivery of it in this way, I operationalized this back in 2016. So we have really mastered the art and maybe we're one of the originators of this kind of online protocol. We know that it works. We know how to dial it in. And we can certainly deliver it to you at a really beautiful invitational offer. So thank you for being a part of this masterclass. I hope that I've provided some friendly disruption and some helpful tools for you to begin to reconnect to your innate power, to your body's wisdom, and to the expansive imagination that can inspire you towards all that you came here to claim as a human.